Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and today we are going to be taking a look at the Uru Bolt V8. Super excited to check out this board, so let's get started. <laughs> First, I want to thank Udu for sending me over this board and everything that I talk about will be in the descriptions below. They also did send me over a lot of stuff containing to this board, which is the case, uh, the plugs, uh, a Wi-Fi adapter and some RAM. So I'm able to thoroughly test this board out with what is compatible with this system. They do offer two models of this board. One is the V8 and one is the V3, which they both use the Ryzen embedded V1000 chipset. And on the V8, you have the V1605B clocked at two gigahertz and turbo boost to 3.6 with eight video cores while the V3 is a V1202B clocked at two gigahertz and turbo boost to 3.2 and that has three video cores. Now, as of today, I believe that this is probably the fastest development board or SOC on the market. And honestly, in my opinion, I think it's a little bit of a waste because it's a really powerful small form factor PC. More on that in a little bit. What they ended up shipping me was the V8 version of the Udu board, uh, 16 gigs of RAM or eight each at 2400 megahertz, so dim, DDR4, 19 volt power connector, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and a case. So let's take a look at this board for a second. Now, looking in the back, and I consider the back where the barrel connector is, you have the SPDIF, two HDMI, and two USB-C, which can also double as a display port, then a gigabit ethernet, and then a 19 volt barrel connector. Now on the side, you have three groove connectors and a 40 pin GPIO. Now that 40 pin GPIO is directly interfaced to a Arduino Leonardo communicating via USB to the SOC. Underneath that, you have the SATA power, then the SATA connector, and then another 40 pin. Now that's partially GPIO. Uh, it has the connections like um, SDL2 and the I2C that the Arduino needs. Then you also have another set of connectors at the end where you could interface with the, the board itself, like a key, keyboard mapping and such. Now in the front, you have the front panel, this, the power button, infrared, two USB 3s, and then a headphone jack. Now on top of the board, we have a huge heatsink, not really that big, but it's a 60 millimeter heatsink with a 60 millimeter fan, and then two so dim DDR4 slots capable of 32 gigabytes max and a uh, speed of 2400 megahertz. Now in the BIOS, there's actually an option where you could overclock the RAM and knowing that the Ryzen chips love RAM speed, that might be an option. And if you do screw up, there's actually a little tiny button on the side that allows you to clear the BIOS if you screw up. You have three connectors underneath the board, which is a B key, M key, and an E key, which allows for multiple inputs. Now you can use multiple devices like a Wi-Fi or M.2 or even a NVMe to a PCIe converter so you could actually put in a graphic card. And this has been done, I've seen it done already. And it's something I wanna test in the future as well. Now checking out the case, it's a pretty solid case made out of aluminum and it actually has fitting for a two and a half inch hard drive. So when you're putting the board into the case, just make sure you gotta install the four screws. Now they're positioned all around each corner, but it is a little bit hard to get to. So if you got like a magnetic screwdriver or something like that, I recommend using that or some tweezers to kind of get the screw going at first. When you're done with that, there's a little clear, a, plas a clear plastic piece that comes with the case that allows for light to transfer due to the bolt icon on top of the case. And installing that was a little bit hard. You actually have to get this rubber grommet underneath just so it would stay in place. And then after that, you would have to install the power button onto the case first. Sliding it in wasn't too hard. Now, here I recommend you installing your hard drive in first before actually installing the computer because it was a little difficult for me when I was trying to install it after the case. So I recommend installing the hard drive first. but. Sliding the computer into this case, slide it about halfway, you would have to plug in your power adapter to a front panel. And that goes on pin six and eight, six being negative and eight being positive. And that's it, you're, you're basically done. Then you would have to install the four screws around the side of the case just to hold it in place. And here we have it. You don't lose any options here. You basically still have connections to the side of the case, the front of the case, and the back of the case. So you're not losing anything at all. Plugging in a two and a half inch hard drive with the supplied cables doesn't look too bad as well because it's, it's a shortened version of the cable. So it looks pretty good. On the bottom of the case, you actually have four mounting holes if you needed to mount it to a monitor for a visa mount. 
So if you're plugging this to a TV or a bigger monitor and you just want to use it as a thin client to back the computer, you can do that as well. All right, so we're going to be testing this in a Windows 10 platform just so I could get some benchmarks in and to tell you a little bit more about it. First off, one thing I would recommend swapping out is the fan. The fan has no fan curve whatsoever. It's either full on or full off and it's a little obnoxious. It's actually pretty loud. But it still does a great job keeping the temperatures where it's supposed to be. On idle, it chills around 38 to 39 degrees Celsius in an ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And I changed the fan curve to kick in around 45 compared to the 40 that it came with. So the fan doesn't keep going on and off because you got that three degrees variant where it'll think it should start off and you know. So it stays relatively quiet when I'm just idling and quickly browsing through stuff. I'm not, if I'm doing some intense work, the fan will kick on. I did do a CPU stress test and the maximum temperature I've seen was 51 degrees Celsius. So the fan does really good at keeping it, the temperatures down. But it, like I said, it's just loud and obnoxious. And I recommend changing over to something like a 60 millimeter noise blocker fan, something that has some variable control. The only downside to this is that the fan pinout is not a standard fan pinout you would see on a CP on a standard motherboard or something like that. So you would have to kind of make your own connector. And that's something I will be doing because I, that, that sound is a little bit obnoxious to me. Next up, we have 3D Mark. Now, because it's got the Voodoo cores, the eight Voodoo cores in there, similar to what you have in the Ryzen second generation three series, it's actually not too bad. You should be able to play titles from 2015 and before, AAA titles, and it would handle it pretty well in a small form factor like this. That's why I'm so impressed with this thing. Now, as far as 3D Mark scores go, we have 6,570 on the bench, and that's pretty impressive for what this is and the form factor it's in and what it's really meant for. As far as the PC mark, we have 3,204, which is also impressive because it's got four cores, eight threads in this guy. It's actually a little bit faster than the Ryzen second generation three series, just because it's got a little bit more cores than what they got. Overall, I average around 1.5 gigahertz. Um, depending on what I'm doing, I would reach the maximum speed of two and it will turbo boost to 3.6 at times on all cores. Now, for those of you guys who are thinking about virtualizing this or using this as a full Linux machine, it does support virtualization and also supports, get this, IOMMU, which is pass-through. So if you are planning to stick in a graphic card in here, running Linux and then a Windows VM and passing through the graphic card to the Windows, yeah, it's possible with this guy. So as far as my conclusion goes, uh, this board is amazing. It's really fast. It's very powerful. It's actually keeping up with a lot of the modern computers and able to do a lot of the things that they could do right now as far as playing games and processing power. It's also considered a development board because it has all the GPIOs that you could use. I will be running a lot of simulations and tests with this guy. And I am using Windows as the basis for the benchmarks. So when I run other benchmarks like in Linux and stuff, I can compare it to the Windows. If you guys have any particular tests you want me to try on this guy, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit in the comments below. Again, all the things I talk about in this video will be linked in the description below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.